greetings and welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911. And today we're excited. We have a wonderful program. The name of this program today is A Divine Revelation of Seeking His Presence. Amen. And Dexter and I are very honored to welcome our spiritual mother to the program, Dr. Mary Kay Amen. Baxter. Yay! Amen. Yay is right. What Hallelujah. a blessing. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and um, we want to announce to you that we're going to be doing a series of divine revelations that the Lord has given the, um, Sister Mary, and they're powerful. They will impact and change your life. Amen. My spiritual life has been affected by the wisdom and the knowledge that the Lord has given her. <coughs> And it's for the body. Amen. And the Lord wants for her to release those revelations for the body of Christ to be edified, to be uplifted, and to, and, and to conquer in the name of Jesus. Yes. And, and I want to encourage you to go to the YouTube page under shalomshalom.org and see the series that will be under Series of Divine Revelations, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter. Amen. And I want also invite you to go to her web page and buy her books. They will change your life. If you want somebody to be saved, give them this book, A Divine Revelation of Hell. They will get saved. Amen. Amen. And we want to reach the lost. The Lord is saying souls, souls, souls. Yes. The Lord wants us to win the lost for the kingdom. And then when they get saved, you can let, you can, you can tell them, to, you can buy this book, A Divine Revelation of Heaven, all the beautiful things and the promise when we finish the race, where are we going to go to? Amen. Amen. And her latest book, which is a powerful book, A Divine Revelation of Satan's Deceptions. And this is a powerful book. In this book, which is her latest book, has only been out less than two years, the Lord brought to remembrance many of the experiences and the revelations that he had particularly for this day. The crucial insights into the deceptions that Satan uses to destroy the people of God and the tactics that he uses to defeat believers. Amen. And the way you can buy this book is you can go to the website www.marykaybasterinc.com and you can go to her bookstore. Amen. And, and it will be a blessing to you. Amen. And before we begin, I'm going to ask um, which one of you two would like to pray for the program? Amen. Which one feels led? Amen. Well, I'll start us off. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, honor, yes. and praise. And we ask you just to yes, come Lord. here, take over, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us, anoint yes. us to speak your truth and only yes. your truth in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, now I ask you to open up everyone's eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive mm -hmm. your truth. Lord, we're expecting amazing things today from oh, you. Oh, yes, Father. We come to you with great expectation. Yes, we're Lord. so thankful for what you're going to do today. In, in Jesus', Jesus name, name, amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so a divine revelation of seeking his presence. So we're going to not only talk about scriptures that are very relevant here, but we're also going to give testimonies from Mary and Mar Marisol and myself as to how practically that looks in seeking the Lord's presence. Because so many times today in the world, in the church, people want to know who God is and then they want to experience God and his presence. We don't just want a far off God who's in the galaxies that we never experience him or his presence or his love filling us. We want to experience all that God has for us. And that includes in the scriptures his presence. So let's talk about what those scriptures are. And you know, one of our favorites is um, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, because it really speaks about God and how he responds to us when we seek him. So we're going to find here that when we seek him with all his heart, we're going to be amazed at what he promises will happen in our lives. So let's see what this says. For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for a hope and for a future. 
then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart yes I will be found by you saith the Lord Amen. Wow that's so amazingly packed with the revelation of God's heart he doesn't want a distant relationship with us he wants an intimate relationship of Abba father and his sons and daughters his family in intimate communion and fellowship with them That's why in the word it says we're to have fellowship with the father the son and with the Holy Spirit even as we do when we have dinner together the same fellowship and once we understand that God sent forth the Son Jesus Christ with the ministry of reconciliation to bring us back into the family of God as his true sons and daughters we realize something his heart burns for an intimate relationship with us and if anyone teaches you otherwise I'm here to testify in my own life that when I sought him with all my heart I found him and Jesus himself revealed himself to me as well as the Holy Spirit reveals himself to me every day when he falls on me and he's inside of me this is a God who wants to abide in us and us to abide in him so what does the scripture mean to you guys well Dexter uh, can I say something yeah it means a very uh, very important because it said when you seek me you will find me when you do it with all your heart Dexter and when I first began to seek God after I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and Marcel probably can tell you too, we were really on fire, weren't we, Marcel? Yes. I prayed for six weeks almost straight after I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Night and day. Loved it. Loved the Holy Spirit. Wow. And I knew he was working in me, man. Cause Amen. He was cleaning me up like a fish, you know? Oh, yeah. Getting the junk out, making, mm -hmm. having me overcome and do certain things. Amen. <laughs> and it, the Holy Spirit is powerful, too. Like a rotor rooter gets you clean. Yeah. Holy. A rotor rooter, huh? Yeah. The, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that, uh, in the beginning, in that scripture there, he would give me that, Dexter. Seek me with all your heart. Holy. Don't be listening to the TV or the radio. Get away and get alone and talk to me. Amen. Yeah, ah. seek my face. Mm -hmm. and, and, have a, and you may not have a set time, Dexter. Mm -hmm. Like you work all day and then other people work all day and night. Right. But God will make time for you and he'll do it when you least expect it. Amen. He'll say, come aside, won't he, Dexter? Amen. Hear he what the master's saying. Amen. Right? In your car, coming home, going. Well, yeah, Mary. I wake up, and Marisol knows this. I start praying in the Spirit and singing to the Lord in the shower. I start yeah. out my day with the Lord. I put on my worship music, and it's my favorite thing. And when we go to bed, the last thing we talk about is the Lord, and we usually share some scriptures mm -hmm. or prophetic words he's given us. And then Marisol usually, I'm just saying for us, a lot of the nights she has a dream from the Lord and it's really it's delightful is all I can say we wake up in the morning and the first question we ask each other this is the truth is did you have a dream she asked me did I, did I have a dream and when we do we're so excited because we know the Lord's talked to us in the night and we start talking about the dream ask the Lord for interpretation and immediately our day starts out with the Lord and I think God loves to give us those dreams so our first thoughts when we do wake up is he's calling us unto himself. And it's such a delight, Mary. Oh, you know, um, yes. today, like, I'm always worried about my gray hair. You know, because I have gray hair <laughs> right here. And I'm happy for my gray hair. Because last night, I had a dream. And the Lord said he was blessing my gray hair. And then I was, like, so happy. Because I said, that's so, that's so, I had a dream. Amen. And he said, gray hair, he blessed you with gray hair. That means he's blessing you with wisdom. And I'm not, thank you, Lord. You know I need all the wisdom I can get. Hallelujah. Because sometimes I'm flaky, you know. And I was so <laughs> blessed. I said, thank you, God, for giving me some wisdom. Because sometimes you just need wisdom to able to be able to face the world. And it is such an amazing thing that God knows exactly why we need and we don't even have to ask him if he gave it to me it's because i need it amen, amen. and it's so wonderful yeah. that he is there wanting to empower us to bless us 
Be, if yeah. we seek Him truly with all our hearts, like Mary was saying, Amen. Amen. Yeah, and and I want to tell you and myself how glad I'm to be here, Dexter, and to the audience. Uh, we have prepared quite a few times, hours in prayer for these series for you Amen. on the the gift of revelations, dreams, and visions, and we'll have it labeled and but ever. Uh, television show we do now, right, Dexter, for the next five weeks is going to be about revelations. Amen. And I just want to say a little bit about that last book, Marissa. Which one? This one. This is the last one. Yeah. Uh, this one here, children, contains a lot about hell scenes, too. It's all about where Jesus took me into hell and gave me wisdom in my latter days to give me understanding about what I saw in the pits in hell. And it's a powerful book. And uh, the thing about it is, when you read this, you weep and you cry because you think it could have been you down there. So our purpose for these shows is to help you understand how to overcome the sins of your flesh, how to help you understand how much God loves you. And right, Dexter, how when you yeah. get born again, when you get when you get born again on the earth, there's something goes on in heaven, Dexter. Yeah. The angels actually take their report, Marsos, to heaven, and there they take it to a big angel in record rooms, mm -hmm. and there that report is given to that angel, and every sin you ever did before, honey, is washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the most beautiful testimony, and we're not going to tell it right now, but if you're watching and you think. You still have to keep repenting for your old sins. No, honey. When you meant business and sought God, like the scripture says, and you came to him, he forgave you. It's all gone in a sea of forgetfulness. And we're going to prove that to you during these series. Right, Dexter? Hallelujah. Yeah. And I just want to add, because Mama has shared this testimony with me, that this book has all the pages of your life up until the point you're saved. And an angel actually takes the sponge and with the blood of the lamb washes, blots out every page of your life. And it, as far as the east Ooh, is from the yes. west, so is it removed from the yes. Father's memory. Yes. And I'm sorry, this is God Almighty, is all-knowing. He purposely wipes that out and washes it clean by the blood of his son. And you are now redeemed in his sons and daughters. Hallelujah. And then, Ooh. as Mama always said, never forget this. If you then sin, which we do, you be quick to confess your sins, and they're blotted out. The blood of the Lamb is so powerful, it not only covers all your sins till you come to Him, but it also covers all your sins until the Father takes you home in His pre-appointed day. Never forget that. When 1 John says to confess your sins, you continue. As the Holy Spirit, and this is one of the things we always talk about, the closer you are to the Holy Spirit, the more you hear His voice and the, and the convicting. And He tells us when we need to repent. Well, he shows not. us. Right. And then he, he empowers us. Exactly, Mama. And what I love about your story is when you came to the Lord, you spent so much time with the Lord, and He was working overtime to wash out all that past sin so that you were overcame over every one of overcame, your sins yes. by the power of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Because the more you seek Him and the more you surrender to That's Him, the true. more Holy Spirit has the power to sanctify you and wash you clean and empower you to overcome. I'm telling you, we couldn't overstate this for my own life, I will tell you. I was one of the worst prodigal sons you will find. When he washes you clean and you overcome those sins, it is amazingly a miraculous, beautiful thing. Even the word says, the blood of the lamb in Hebrews 9, 14 and 10, 22, washes your conscience clean of all your past and your dead heart. works yes. and, and your heart. heart. And he gives you a new heart. And your soul. Do you hear this? So that you can serve the Lord with a clear, clear conscience. And this is a word for some of you. When the devil is constantly accusing you of your past and you have truly repented, remember there is therefore now no condemnation Nation. for those who are in Christ Jesus. You oh, can take hallelujah. those thoughts and those lies of the enemy and you can cast them out of your mind and your heart. Yes. You, you tell them you lie or you go. I, I cast those thoughts out of me in Jesus' name and I reject them. 
and I break covenant with them, I will not receive them again in Jesus' Ooh, name. Hallelujah. And you watch how God, with the clear conscience, now allows you to walk forward in his peace and his joy. And I hear there's a number of you, you that want his peace and his joy, which surpasses understanding yes. and never leave you. Yes. And as Ooh. God is my witness, it Thank will you, never leave you. If you simply seek his presence and seek him whenever anything hits you in life, even in this area, it says, cast all your anxieties yes. upon him, and he gives you his peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he cares for us, Dexter. He loves us, and Jesus paid the price. Yes. Mary, yes. he paid the price for us to be washed clean. And I believe, Dexter, why the Lord gave me all these revelations as a young woman, as I'm older now, is to help new generations because today, they not, a lot of them are not hearing the truth, how much Jesus loves you. Dexter, there's Hallelujah. people even preaching, don't talk about the blood of the Lamb anymore. People are even preaching, you have to keep paying for your sins. Oh, no, you don't. No. Jesus Christ came to set you free, and He will set you free. And when you seek Him, that one verse with your whole heart, darling, He will heal you. He'll heal your soul too, Dexter, your brokenness. And he came, Marshall, Hallelujah. to deliver us from our own self, right? That we can overcome all the sins of our flesh, blaspheming, adultery, fornication, lying, cheating. Hatred is a sin. Witchcraft is a sin, darling. Many things during these series, Dexter, we're going to really help the people. And we're asking for a new move <clears throat> of God. We're asking for a holy move of God. Hallelujah. Dexter, we're asking for a, a, an un, a, what would you say? A miraculous yeah. move of God yes. for you out there because you're important to God. Do you hear me? You're important. And Ooh. don't let anybody tell you any different, huh? Hallelujah. Because God loves you and we love you and you're going to overcome. You know, God always fulfills his promises. Yes. He is faithful. And look, and look, he sent Jesus. Mary said that he sent Jesus. And look at what Galatians 4, 6 says. Because your sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Wow. So you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And since you are a son and a daughter, God has also made you an heir. What a powerful Amen. And in, and in Romans 6, it says you're no longer a slave to sin. Hallelujah. Sin has no more dominion over you because when you're reborn, you crucify your old nature, your flesh is crucified with Christ on the cross. Read Romans 6 through 8, and you'll see how it starts out with sin having dominion and you being set free by the new birth and the power of the resurrection of the Holy Spirit that sanctifies you when you're born again. And, and the more you surrender every area to the Lord, the more the Holy Spirit will fill you and take over and sanctify you in that area. Amen. It is a truth. Hide nothing from God. If I can tell you something I've learned so many times, hide nothing from Him. He knows everything anyway. Amen. Why would you hide something from Him? Why would you pretend that the sin isn't, isn't even, even there. Or you haven't forgiven someone and it's okay. No, you speak to him about the fact you even have a hard time forgiving someone that hurts you. You come to him, the living waters, and you watch what he will do. He simply asks that you seek him with all your heart. And then he will release the power to set you free. Because he who the Son of God, Jesus, has set free is free indeed. All he asks is that you come to him always in everything. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to talk about Paul for a second, Marisol and Mama, because Paul actually was a very great sinner in that Stephen, when he was stoned to death, really the first martyr we know of in Acts of the disciples and the followers that was stoned to death, Stephen, when he was stoned to death, Saul was the one who went out and grabbed the church, put him in jail, and even brought him forth to be crucified or stoned to death. And when Stephen was stoned to death, they took the tunic of Stephen and laid it at Saul's feet, who later became Paul. So now I want to let you know what Paul said about what it means to seek God. And believe me, he needed to be forgiven also. And he needed the love and the love of Christ 
And listen to what it says in Philippians 3.8. This is Paul, and he calls himself effectively a rascal, one of the worst sinners. But listen what he says. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss. For what? For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. Remember, he was a Pharisee, and he believed he was righteous under the law. He's discovered no. That was untrue. There was no righteousness through the law. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and no one can obey the law. He said it's not from the law, but which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And here he says it again, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Paul says, everything else is rubbish. Even my good name, even my position as a Pharisee, as a ben, of the tribe of Benjamin, an elite one. He was elite within the body of Israel. He was honored. He put that all aside for knowing Christ. And if Paul's sole desire was to know Christ and Christ crucified, and also to know the power of his resurrection <laughs> in his life, then how could we be any less? in pursuing that. Amen, Hallelujah. Dexter. So Mary, how what do you tell people, how do they <coughs> follow and how do they know Jesus in the power of the resurrection? <laughs> how have you experienced well, that? I want also when Jeremiah here where Dexter was reading, excuse me, mm -hmm. <coughs> chapter of, uh, 29, verse 13, and you shall seek me and find me and you search me your whole heart. Mm. Then read 14, Dexter, what it says. I will be found of you. You hear that? Saith the Lord. And will turn away your captivities. Look at that. He's going to turn away your enemies. And then keep reading it, Dexter. Yeah, I will yeah, there bring you. you back from your captivity. <clears throat> I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from, from which I cause you to be carried away captive. He'll bring you into his homeland, into whatever he has for you, he'll bring you forth, out of the captivity, into his perfect right. will, wherever right. he has ordained for you to be, he will bring you into that. And we got a call today from a friend of ours that she and her husband were really saved and serving the Lord, but he, he had some uh, problems he wanted help with, Dexter. Mm -hmm. And when he got help, he was a totally different man. And she said that very day he got a promotion <laughs> on his job. Yeah. And God spoke to him, they're going to get a home. And she said when her husband came home, they'd been married quite a while, the rejoicing hit the house, and they were weeping and shouting and praising the Lord. Because, wow. you know, when you seek the Lord, you're going to yeah. find him. And truly, we don't know sometimes one of us can block that power of God if we become rebellious, right? That's Actually, right, yeah. Or we don't want to admit we're doing things. Like we had a men's meeting, and God had me preach to the men's meeting about hell. Amen. And I told them that they were stinkers in the, in the <laughs> nostrils of God because when I saw hell, people were in hell for pornography. Yep. I'm serious. You guys got to quit that in women. And, and all kind of stuff, uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Everything that the world tells you is good is not good, y'all. I'll be straight with you. Because in hell, Dexter, there's a place for every part of the works of our flesh that we've yeah. never repented and overcome yeah. about. Yeah. Right? And, Mom, you always talk about Galatians 5, I think it's like 19 through 22, uh, right around 16, that area. Or, yeah, starting Galatians with 16, 5, actually. First, yeah. And it talks about the works of the flesh, and it says, those who practice these will not <laughs> see the kingdom of God. Right. And practicing means we're not set free from them. And that's why part Continuously of, to do them. Right, right, continuously to do them. And that's why seeking God and seeking his presence and seeking what he has already done through the cross to be manifested through us is so important when we first come to the Lord. And even if you've fallen away and you're coming back, it's so important that we're washed clean and sin has no dominion over us. Because the power of the Spirit 
gives you the ability to you overcome, yes. to get the breakthrough yes, that true. you that's need. True. Amen. You can't yes. do it on your own. When I used to overeat, oh, what a struggle. But when I surrendered that to God, I was able to lose weight because I didn't do it in my strength. I did it in the strength of the Lord. But you were faithful yes. in that you ate healthy food and you exercised six out of seven days a week. So you also have taken act, steps of faith and then the anointing of God empowers you, even in your weakness, his power is perfecting your weakness to keep you on that path because you've committed your way to the Lord, Marisol. I need to tell people this. You committed your way to the Lord that you would be, have a healthy body because you knew your body was the temple of the Holy Spirit and you wanted to fulfill your ministry on this earth, not allow the devil to take your life early because of bad choices on what you ate. And once you committed your way to the Lord, now the Lord's anointing comes and blesses that. And Amen. That, and that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I want to turn to Hebrews 11.5. I want to talk about Enoch and what the Lord says after he talks about Enoch. Now what's remarkable about Enoch is Enoch was brought up to the Lord. He never died. Him and Elijah, the two people in the Bible that never died, they so pleased the Lord that the Lord actually just caught them up and they never had to die physically on this earth. And Enoch was one of those. So I want to see what the Lord says about Enoch in his word. Hebrews 11.5, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Did you hear that? Enoch, before the Bible was written, the Bible wasn't yet written, he walked with God, the word says, Hallelujah. and he pleased God. This is after Adam and Eve sinned, after the fall, Enoch walked with God and he pleased God. So God caught him up. Do you, do you, so to say that after the fall, it's impossible to know God, I'm sorry, but Enoch walked with God and Enoch pleased God. And Enoch even walked in God's ways because he had a relationship with God and God's heart became one with his. And so he obeyed God implicitly. But let's read verse 6 now. So, without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he's God, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right. So, what does it mean to be, that God rewards those who diligently seek him? And I'd like to also say, as you're saying that, Dexter, over yeah. Hebrews, the same, uh, chapter 10, uh -huh. and at verse 19, it says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness, we've got to have boldness, to enter into the holies of holies by the blood of Jesus. Wow. So when we, what we're doing, we're laying a groundwork for all these series. Mm -hmm. We're letting you know we're lifting up Jesus Christ, honey. Hallelujah. And we're letting you know once you're saved and born again, you have access to the Father through Jesus Christ the Lord. Because yep. he paid a price for you, baby. And that's the whole thing, right, Dexter? Yeah. That, and Dexter's can give you more knowledge on that. But read the next one, verse 20, Dexter. Verse to 20. Uh-huh. And he <clears throat> right here, yeah. So I'm going to read the whole thing again. Therefore, brethren, yes. having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. So, and then it says in verse 22, I got to read that. So read let it. us draw near. Yes, there you hallelujah, go. Hallelujah, Mama. Let us draw near. Draw near to who? To Ooh, God. Hallelujah. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So when we come to salvation, not only are we washed clean and have a pure conscience, but we also have a pure heart because it gives us a new heart. And now we come boldly to his throne of grace. We come boldly into his presence. He's not hidden himself from us. In fact, the veil is removed so we can come directly to God the Father through the blood of the Lamb. And, and Dexter, uh, verse 23 goes along with it. Let us hold fast, listen children, the profession of our faith, okay? 
you cannot see faith, but you know faith that Jesus Christ died for the whole world. We have seen uh, the dead being raised. I have. I've seen little animals we pray for, like little birds and rabbits being raised from the dead because God loves those little things. And as you look at how powerful God is and you see faith in action is what I'm trying to tell you, sweetheart. If you're out there and you want to learn to pray for people, practice on your own family. Right, Marcel? Mm -hmm. Practice on your uh, animals. Right, Marcel? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Marcel and Dexter have two of the cutest little puppies, uh, Ricky <laughs> and Pumpkin. And one, one's a poodle and one's the baloney dog, right? And what happens when we go to pray, they'll get, they get knocked out, get slain, and lay real still. And then one of them keeps looking in the air like he's seeing things. Amen. And they have so much fun with us. And it's so beautiful to know that they'll come up to us for prayer and they don't know anything about faith, but they feel the love of God and the anointing of God on us. And they'll take their little head and push it, take our hand and push it on where their body hurts. So don't tell me God is not full of grace and mercy Amen. and wants to heal the little animals and people. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you're out there and you're not using your gifts and you're saved, born again, serving the Lord. Start practicing. You may never get a platform like we have, but use it, honey. Amen, Dexter? Hallelujah. Yeah, Mama. Get people and the saved. more you use your gift, the more gifts God's going to give you. Why, Amen. Marisol? Because scripture. of the scripture, he who is faithful, faithful and, and little, little will be faithful and much. much. And God... One always starts this out because he's building our character. He's forming us into the image of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ from glory to glory, from trial to trial, from test to test. And therefore, when you're That's faithful in a little and saying. bringing forth those gifts, then he promotes you and the anointing grows and you get new gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. Marcel has one more scripture on yeah. that. Amen. And, What's that? Um, 1024. Amen. It says, it's, um, um, it says clearly, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works. Amen. <laughs> good works. It all goes together. To that work awesome? for the Lord, to heal the sick, to proclaim, to set the captive free, to pray for healing, to pray for provision, to pray for the Lord to Hallelujah. bring marriages back together for the Lord to bless and for his mercies and his goodness to be poured out through us, earthen vessels. Amen. 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 You know, Marisol, because in our flesh, we can't love our brothers and sisters the way the Lord commands us. Yeah. It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. But with the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, Hallelujah. peace, joy, Ooh, long suffering, good. compassion, mercy, you can actually obey the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is to love your enemies. Bless your enemies. Pray for your enemies. It is impossible without the grace of God. But with the grace of God, all things are possible, including you forgiving those who have hurt you all the time. As the Lord would say, 70 times 7 times are infinite. If your brother comes against you, your sister, your husband, your wife, your children, no matter who it is, if they hurt you, you can forgive them through the grace of the Lord that flows through you. Once you make that choice to forgive, the anointing comes and empowers you to forgive. But it is impossible without the grace of God. And you know, when you walk forgiving, using the gifts, you're walking in God's presence. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Because, you know, seeking him, to know him and to follow in the power of the resurrection. We're called to be imitators of Christ. And what did Christ do all the time? Bless other people. Amen. Yes. It says everywhere he went, he went about doing good. Amen. Amen. And I believe there's people watching there today, Dexter, that needs prayer. I feel in my heart that we're laying down the foundation for all these series. Please understand they're going to have they're going to have some available for you later on for the whole series when we're finished. But today, Dexter, I feel like if you have another scripture, there's mm -hmm. people watching that really want prayer today. They're going through some hard times, Dexter. And they've been, many have been persecuted for the cause of Christ. Oh. And many of you watching need to know you're so loved. And we believe in revivals coming, don't we, Dexter? 
We believe that God's going to bring revival to us all over the world. I really believe that. And I believe it's time that we understand that God has people everywhere that love Him and praise Him. Amen. Amen, Dexter. Amen. Amen. And I, I kind of feel there's some that are troubled. Um, and even some of you that are leaders in a church, you're worn <coughs> out and you're troubled and you've been attacked, your family's been attacked, and you've go, gone through a lot of hardship. So one of the things about seeking His presence, one of my favorite stories I'm going to read and then we're, we're going to pray, is 1 Samuel 36 about David. I want you to hear what happened to David. David was with the mighty men of valor that were following him. And he, he had left and gone to war. And when he came back to his home city where all their families were, the enemy came and stole all their wives and their daughters, everything that they had. The enemy came and stole it. So the men were mad at David. His mighty men of valor were mad at him and to the point where they wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. And I want to see, because a lot of you are going through hardships, even within ministry and others and being attacked. I want you to see what David did. And then this will give us really a lighthouse to how to pray. Listen to 1 Samuel 30, verse um, 6. Now, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was heavily grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters, because remember, all the sons and daughters and wives were stolen. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And listen how he did this. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Amalek's son, bring, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord. Listen to this. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Listen to what he says. He inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. What is the pattern that David set here to strengthen himself in the Lord? What did he do? He sought the Lord. He sought the he Lord. He sought the Lord first, and wanted to help his fellow men and so they wouldn't be destroyed. Did he have a pity party? No, but he was a man of integrity and he knew that he had to call on God to save the people. Yeah, and he was in trouble, wasn't he? Yes, very much, very much so. They lost all their loved ones. Yes. And they wanted to stone him. Yes. I'd say that's a time where a pity party isn't going to do much good, but the way he sought the Lord he, through the priest, yes. He asked them, Lord, Tell me specifically what you want me to do. He said, should I go after them? He asked the Lord specifically, what, what, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your strategy from heaven of what you want me to do? Amen. It's amazing, and God answered him. And the Lord just told me to read this, James 1, 5, because I want you to know this, the promises of God. And this is true for any of you that are going through hardship or hard times. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. What, what you just said, Marisol, is he asked for wisdom of God, shall I pursue them? And the Lord said, yes, yeah, surely you will pursue them and, and overtake them, and you will recover all. He went to the Lord for help. He went and sought his presence. Yes. This is so key. Hallelujah. In the midst of crisis, the first thing we should always do is cry out unto the Lord. If you have a prayer closet, go into your prayer closet. Marisol Hallelujah. knows I do this, and I'm just going to tell you, there's a practical side of this. Make a decision to go yes. to the Lord. Yes. In the midst of the trials and tribute, make a decision to go to Him. Go to your prayer closet. Marisol knows I do this, and I hide myself in there until I hear a word from the Lord. That's the other thing. He just promised here he'll give you wisdom. Yes. And he's always given us wisdom. When things hit our family or we have trials or tribulations, and we seek him until we find him and get the wisdom from him. Amen. This is the promise of the Lord. This is one of the greatest blessings of seeking his presence. And his Praise wisdom God. is he will give it to you. Praise God. Praise you God. Know, we don't have perfect lives. <laughs> things happen to us too. And we have to count on the Lord. Yes, as much as you do, we have to pray, right, Mary? Yes. Every day yes. we pray. Every day. 
Amen. And it's fun. It's fun. We to love talk it. Talk to God and have <clears throat> a great time worshiping Him. And along that line, I have to read one more scripture. I'm sorry, ahead, but the story okay. of John. Go ahead. I love this story in John 13, 23. Jesus has just announced to the disciples before they take communion. This is right before Jesus goes to the cross on the night in which he's betrayed. He takes communion with his disciples, and John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, is resting his head on Jesus' bosom. And Jesus tells the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples all start talking amongst themselves, who is it? Is it me? Is it you? Who is it? Who is it? And eventually, Peter comes, and he doesn't even have the boldness, this is bold Peter, to ask Jesus directly. Who do you think he asks? That the disciple whom Jesus loved, John resting on his bosom, Peter asked John, whom is Jesus talking about that is going to betray him? What is remarkable about this is Jesus gives John the answer. Because John had an intimate fellowship and loving relationship with the Lord, Jesus even shared his secrets with John. And there's many of you who want to know, hear from the Lord. You want to hear what his plans are. You want to hear what's going on. You want to hear even what the enemy is doing against your family. You want to hear from the Lord. Let's let's read this. I love this. Verse 21. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. And John wrote this book, and we, everyone believes that it's John. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him, to John, to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Talk about seeking his face. Jesus answered, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Even secrets he reveals when you seek his presence. He will give you the wisdom for things that will astonish you when you ask the Lord. Amen. He promises. He will not berate you, he says. He will not criticize you because you ask for that wisdom. What he wants is that intimate relationship where you ask him for all these things and then he will give you the wisdom. Amen. So I think with a lot of what a lot of people are coming going through, it's time that we pray for some people. Yeah, Yeah, I want to know how much time we have so that we can pray. Amen. Yeah, we have about fifteen minutes. We have ten minutes. So about ten minutes. So we're gonna pray and then we might have another scripture or so, but but um Mary, do you feel led to start praying? Yes. If you're out there and you're watching and you're uh, not saved, you want Christ in your heart, Amen. we want to make sure that we, you, you understand that yes. he's available all the Amen. time for you. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born yes. of a Virgin Mary Ooh. many, many years ago, honey. And he knew yes. his destiny. Thank he you. knew as he grew up he had to go to a cross. Yes and give his life for you and I to have life eternal. Amen. He knew uh, because he was the Son of God, honey. Yes. And he went to that cross. That's why we celebrate Easter when he, he was crucified for us so many, many years ago, sweetie. But that power and the Word of God has never, never stopped. That blood of Jesus Christ has never lost its power, honey. Amen. Hallelujah. And today we want to pray with you if yes. you're a sinner and you're watching. We ask right now, you just close your eyes. Yes. Don't look at us, but listen. Mm-hmm. Yes. You say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you yes. today just like I am. Yes, Father. Jesus. I've done wicked things, Father, against you and heaven and other people. Yes, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you Amen. in Jesus' name. Yes. yes. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to please forgive me. And to come into my heart yes. and yes. save my soul. Amen. And I give my life to you today, holy. Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. Teach me your holy ways, Lord. Yes. Fill me full of your power. Yes. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit, yes, Jesus. Yes. 
that I may understand and overcome. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you go ahead, Dexter. Ooh. Amen. And Marisol, did you have something? No, you go. Okay. And Father, we pray yes. for those who are having in their hearts to seek your face, to seek your presence, and want to experience you fully. So, Father, I ask for you to put on our hearts, yes. Lord. In fact, right now, I'm just going to quote the scripture, 1 Chronicles 22, 19. The Lord just told me to do this, so I'm going to do it. See, there's choices we make, and we make those choices, and the anointing comes. And this is an important choice I make a lot of areas of my life. The Lord says in 1 Chronicles 22, 19, Now, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore, arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. And he told me, you actually make a choice to set, write it on your heart, make a choice that I am going to seek the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength all the days of my life. And let's just pray that. Father, yes. we set our hearts and our souls yes, in the name of Jesus Christ yes, Lord Jesus. that you alone are our Savior and the Lord yes, of our Lord life. Yes. And we set our hearts to seek Ooh, you with all of our heart, cut up all of our soul, cut up. all of our yes, mind, Lord, and Jesus. all of our strength, Woo! all the days of yes, our yes, life Father. in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. And now I ask Ooh. you supernaturally to write this covenantally on our hearts and on our souls. In the Thank name of you, Jesus Ooh. Christ. How and now I ask you to guard us and keep yes. us in this all the days of our lives, Lord. Help us to walk in your perfect will from this day henceforth. Mm. And mm. if we veer to the left or right, we surrender for you to bring us back. Yes. Father, immediately discipline us. We surrender to that and bring Ooh. us back into thy perfect will. And Lord, we ask for you to put a burning on our heart. And Holy Spirit, help us in this all the days of our life. To set time aside for the Lord and to seek Him with all yes. of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. We're asking you, Holy Spirit, to be our helper in this and help us to seek the Lord with all our heart in Jesus' name. You know, Dexter, I'm sensing that the Lord yes. wants to heal some people. Amen. I'm, I'm seeing a heart beat. Amen. Yes, yeah, I feel the anointing. And I think the Lord wants to heal somebody's heart. Yes. So can you pray for that, honey? Yes. You want <clears throat> Dexter and me? Yeah, Dexter and you pray for that. Yes. You know, I had that word of knowledge before Ooh. we came to church. Hallelujah. Ooh. That someone really had a, a physical bad heart. Yes. Wow. And you're watching tonight and you need a miracle. You have no strength yes. to do anything wow. hardly. But tonight, we're just going to reach our hands towards yes. you. Yes. And we'll pray together. Yes. Right, Dexter? We yes. touch and agree and release yes. the anointing of healing. Yes. To go into the camera and to where you're at right now, honey. And may the Almighty yes. God touch your heart and give you a brand new heart. Yes. Wow. Take out all that Ooh. sickness and disease, yes, Jesus. Heal our precious friend. In wow, Jesus the name of Jesus name. Christ. Amen. We bind Ooh, the spirit of God. infirmity. We cast yes. you out in Jesus' mm. name. Yes, I feel in the Jesus anointing. Name. Thank you. Jesus. And Lord, Ooh. we plead the blood of the Lamb over that heart. Cleanse it, renew it, restore it mm -hmm. in Jesus. the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And all the veins and arteries mm. be opened up in the name of Jesus. Any occlusions be opened up and be yes. removed. I command any occlusions of your blood flow to mm -hmm. disintegrate. Ooh. Yes. Anything on the sides of your yes. arteries or veins disintegrate and come out of your body without harming you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your blood flow oh, to be hallelujah. whole to all the organs of your body and heart be blessed to pump in a regular beat and be blessed to bring nutrition and nourishment Ooh. and health to every part of the body in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and also, Ooh. Dexter, I feel like that they need to know that God speaks to us. We pray a lot. We love God a lot. He's given us many gifts, honey. So these are called words of knowledge, sweetheart. And he's saying to you, we know by the Holy Spirit's telling us to pray for you, and we believe. And then Marisol has something to say. Somebody else has a blockage in their jugular, in their jugular vein. Has they what, honey? Their jugular. Their jugular, jugular vein. vein. Uh -huh. Yes, so Father, in the name of Jesus, hurra cosata, we release... No, it's a it's, it's a, a vein. It's a vein that takes blood to the brain, oxygen oh. to the brain. Uh -huh. Father, in the name Jesus. of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare oh, that vein clogged, 
cleared, cleared, cleared in the yes. name of Jesus yes, Lord. by the stripes mm. of Jesus on the yes. cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Healing, the healing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And, Amen. and Dexter, there's also it's a man has a pinched nerve somewhere in his back, and it Ooh. makes his legs jer jerk, jump. Mm. Yes. And can you pray for the man, Dexter? Amen. It's a word of knowledge. Amen. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lay our hand on the back of you, precious brother, and anyone yes. else who has back problems in the name of Jesus. Ooh, glory to and God. And by the stripes of the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Thank that you, That pinched nerve be healed Ooh. in Jesus' Thank you, name. Jesus. All nerves Bless be properly Jesus. aligned on earth as Hallelujah. it is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And even the numbness in your, in your leg in the yes. name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Yes. Glory. Be healed. Proper blood flow and that pain and the, the Ooh. localization of it go in Jesus name we forbid that There's pain to be in your body Thank because you. now everything is realigned in the name of Thank Jesus you, Christ Jesus. and that pain medicine you take in the name of Jesus I ask you Lord to lead them to come off of that and to rejoice and all honor and praise time. and glory are to you exactly come off of that through your doctor only in Jesus yes name. Lord there's Amen. a woman that says I want to believe I want to believe and the Lord says that just ask him to increase your faith. In the name of Jesus, we touch and agree that your faith will increase to believe for yes. the impossible. Oh, yes, to believe for the impossible. Oh, In hallelujah. Jesus' name. Oh, oh yes, We release Lord. our faith to you, honey. Yes. We release the gift of faith on yes. you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jack, how much time do we have? Amen. <laughs> we still have five minutes. Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, praise we, God. Yes. Well, I want to also pray another prayer that the Ooh. Lord gave me, which is Ephesians 3, 16. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful prayer. Um, <clears throat> While you find it, I want you to write to us at shalomshalom.org. Send us your prayer request. Send us your questions, send us your testimony, amen. And uh, I also want you to go to Sister, the, on Facebook, to Sister Mary Kay Baxter's uh, web, um, Facebook page, and I want you to look to see where we're going to be. We're going to be ministering in Southern California. It's going to be powerful, amen. The and West Coast. On the West now. Coast, okay. And it's September the 19th of 2016. And look on her Facebook page, Mary Kay Baxter, and you will see the places we were, where we will be ministering. Amen. Well, she'll be ministering powerfully about hell and heaven. Amen. Yeah. So, Dexter, what's the scripture? I can't wait. Well, it's uh, Ephesians 3.14. This is really important. The Lord's showing me this. And this happened to me also that there's... Um, because you don't fully experience God's love for you and that forgiveness, that washing clean that Mary talked about of all your past, you haven't fully re re received that in your heart and your soul. You haven't fully received it. Therefore, it's hard for you to seek him with all your heart. So the Lord is going to release that fullness of his love into you. And we're asking you, Father, overtake him with your love so that they will feel the fullness of Christ oh, in them hallelujah. and the love of the we Father the for you as sons and Jesus daughters. Name. We're going to release that love as we pray this over mm, you. Hebrews 3.14. Yes. And, and Paul was praying over you, by the way, thousands of years ago. And we're going to yes. come in agreement with that prayer over you. All of us here and yes. everyone on TV come in agreement over our brothers and sisters who have this need. For this reason, we all bow our knees yes. to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm from whom the whole family, and you are part of this family, in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, yes, Lord. that Christ himself may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all yes. the saints what is the width, yes. what is the length, Ooh. what is the depth, and what is the height to know the very love of Christ, which passes knowledge, Amen. that you may be filled, Father, we ask you to fill them yes. with all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly yes. above all that we ask or think, 
according to the power that now works in each one of us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is a prayer written for all generations. And we all come in agreement, Father. We receive the yes, fullness Lord, of Jesus. your love. We see, receive the fullness of Christ yes, Jesus, in yes. our hearts. We mm -hmm. receive the fullness of your power to conform that yes, fullness Lord. into our hearts and our inner man. Yes, and any Lord. lies or deceits of the enemy, we cast them out. We break covenant with those lies and deceits. We break covenant with them yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we receive the fullness of your loving grace and that we are washed clean. And there is now yes. therefore no condemnation in each one of us. For we are yours, your sons and daughters in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What a blessing, Dexter. I want to invite you to um, on October the 2nd at 530 in Huntington Beach at the dwelling place of the church of our mighty pastor, Pastor Billings. We will be there. You can look it up on Mary's Facebook page, the address. We'll be there on October the 2nd, starting at 530, the dwelling place. Um, if you live in North Hollywood, Studio City, we will be on October the 16th at the gathering place with Pastor Rick Wright. In the, amen. Amen. The church is at the Beverly Carlin Hotel and Violin. And it starts at 10.30 in the morning, and the woman of God will be preaching. Don't miss it. And we will have a revival this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a bilingual revival in a Spanish church. If you speak Spanish, and I will, be, I will have the honor to translate for Mama. Amen. And so you can go to her webpage. You can go to shalomshalom.org and email me if you want to know specifically about the Spanish church and the address is in Banais. We love you. We want you to Amen. come. We want you to get blessed. Get we blessed. want Amen. you to get prayed for. Amen. We want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit so on that you fire. walk yes. on fire for God. Yes. So that you walk in the power of the yes. resurrection. Amen. 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 And I want to invite you to her website. She has 11 or, is it 11 or 12? Books. Books. 12. 12, 12 books that Amen. she has. And you can go to her web page. But they're all in all the bookstores. All in Spanish or in the bookstores. You can Amazon go Amazon.com. Amazon. You can go anywhere. Com, anywhere. Right. Yeah. And, but if you want to buy the them from her website, it's Mary K. Ba Mary K. Baxter, Inc. And, com, and all you have to do is log into her bookstore. Amen. And remember to buy that new book of the deception. A divine revelation of Satan's deception. It will bless your life. It will empower you to walk in the end times. Amen. Amen. Mary, is there anything you want to add before we close the program well, at Dexter? I just thank God to be here and to share and to people to get born again, Dexter, and hear Hallelujah. the truth of mysteries and revelations in the Bible. Amen. And we're just going to close with the ironic blessing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Don't miss it. Amen. Amen. Amen.